Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and the Properties and Structures of Matter. Now we're almost there now, this is video number 30 and there's only one more after this uh, in this particular series. And in the last few videos we've been looking a little bit at the uh, different ways in which solids can be bonded together. And so in this, final, this second or penultimate video we'll be having a look in a little bit more detail at intermolecular versus intramolecular forces. So let's get to it. Now we've already talked a little bit about the fact that intramolecular forces are the forces involved in chemical bonds. These uh, really come in um, two main types, ionic and covalent. We probably wouldn't necessarily describe uh, molecules as ionic. The term molecule tends to um, refer more to covalent compounds um, uh, or substances or elements. But um, we do know that there are three types of chemical bonds and they are ionic and covalent and metallic. And these are the key chemical bonds that exist between atoms, ions, or um, just basically atoms and ions really, uh, in the three different types of substances that we've looked at. But in the fourth type of substance, we have both inter- and intramolecular forces. And that's in the substances that are covalent molecular networks or solids. Uh, in something like ice, uh, which is solid water, or dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, we have our covalent bonds, but we also have some other bonds that exist between the molecules that are actually holding the discrete molecules together. So rather than being a network or array in the, in the arrangement that we have with ionic covalent network and metallic substances, now we have discrete molecules and some bond that, exi that exists between these individual molecules. These intermolecular forces are not chemical bonds, they are physical bonds. And they are the ones that are most often involved uh, in things like changes of state. I've mentioned this in a previous video, but the three types of intermolecular forces that we will look at are dipole-dipole forces, dispersion forces, and hydrogen bonds. There are some other names, particularly for dispersion forces. You might uh, see these listed as van der Waals forces or London forces. Um, in different textbooks or in different um, sites across the internet. Um, but we're going to just use these three terms, dipole, dipole, dispersion, and hydrogen bonding. So here is a substance, hydrogen chloride, where we have a hydrogen covalently bonded to a chlorine atom. And so within the molecule, we have a very strong covalent bond. But between the molecules, we have something different. In fact, in this case, because the chlorine has such a high electronegativity, uh, it differentially holds these electrons and becomes slightly negative. The uh, hydrogen becomes slightly positive, And so this is actually a polar covalent bond. And a dipole-dipole exists between two poles, two pole two pole forces. And so here's one and here's another one. Two pole, two pole forces are dipole, dipole interactions. Now I should point out at this stage that hydrogen bonds form a subset of the dipole, dipole interactions. Not all dipole, dipole interactions are hydrogen bonds, but all hydrogen bonds are an example of a dipole, dipole interaction. Now, for the hydrogen to um, for a hydrogen bond to be present, there has to be a hydrogen, and that hydrogen can only be bonded to a small number of elements, such as uh, fluorine, chlorine, um, oxygen, nitrogen. Uh, outside of that, any polarity in the molecule would be uh, regarded, therefore, as a dipole-dipole interaction between the different molecules. So let's look at these just quickly in a little bit of detail. And yes, I will apologize. We will probably run over on this particular video. So dipoles occur between molecules which are polar. So we have to have polarity uh, in the molecule. 
and water, gaseous hydro, hydrogen chloride is one of the ones that are there. What happens with these dipoles is we have permanent dipoles. That is, because they are polar, there is a positive and a negative region, and you can see those displayed here. And there is a um, electrostatic attraction as a result, just between the oppositely charged regions in these particular uh, molecules. What these do is they raise relative melting and boiling points as the dipole dipoles are relatively strong forces, especially if they are that subset of hydrogen bonds. Not as strong are dispersion forces, and these result from an uneven electron distribution within atoms without any permanent polarity. So this, these are temporary dipoles. Consider that the electrons are actually kind of moving, two electrons for a bond that are moving backwards and forwards um, into and out of the regions of influence of the two atoms um, that are sharing those electrons. At any point, the electrons will be a little closer to one atom than the other, and this induces a small polarity. So it sets up a temporary dipole-dipole interaction. So just as we saw before, the slightly negative region is attracted to the slightly positive region. But because these electrons can actually then come uh, back in this direction, uh, the polarity doesn't remain um, in a permanent state as it does with our dipole-dipole interactions. As a result, these are the weakest of the intermolecular forces. And so when we're putting these on a little sliding scale, your dispersion forces will be at the bottom. At the top, though, will be these ones, the hydrogen bonds. And these are a special case of the polar bonds and hence a special case of a dipole-dipole interaction. And you can see um, it only occurs when you have bonding of hydrogen to some of the highly electronegative atoms, including, as I mentioned, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, and fluorine. It occurs after the hydrogen's electron has bonded with another atom, and the hydrogen becomes slightly positive, attracting the non-bonding electron pair of other atoms through electrostatic forces. So we know, having had a look at our water molecules before, that we have a negative region where the oxygens are and positive regions where the hydrogens are and so this attraction between the positive regions of the water molecule and the negative region of an adjacent water molecule form what we call hydrogen bonds these are the strongest of the intermolecular forces and they're the ones that create those higher melting and boiling points a lot of information to get through but we've only got one more uh, presentation or one more video for the series and then we'll be done. Thanks for watching.